Now let's take a look at the Baal Moore's explanation of the two rules, one of Rav Zera and one of, uh, of, of Abba, the father of Rav Simoy, on Rosh Hashanah, Chofam and Beis. Uh, for your interest, and we won't go over it, if you if your own reading, if, if you can read the Hebrew on page 5, uh, is the Baal Moore on Chofam and Beis, and in fact, uh, page 5 is just a small ec- ec- excerpt. Uh, from page six, which is a full uh, page of the Balamor on it. This is actually the first of two pages with this small print. But before we can really, before we go into the understanding of the Baal, uh, of the Balamor, uh, it's actually fitting to uh, understand the, uh, the 12th century uh, uh, model of how um, they believed the world was uh, uh, made up. So I have over here a, uh, a globe. And um, I'm going to put the globe not this way with north on the top. Rather, I'm going to put the globe with you looking at the uh, the North Pole, and putting Israel right at the top here. Here's Israel, right there. In the um, 12th century, it was believed that This entire hemisphere was called the Yishuv, or better, in fact, my hand went the wrong way, starting from the east and going through, going through the west, was considered the Yishuv. There was no knowledge of what existed on what we call today the Western Hemisphere. This is the Eastern Hemisphere, and this is the Western Hemisphere. It was believed at that time that there was nobody inhabiting the Western Hemisphere. It was believed that the entire Western Hemisphere was covered by a great ocean. And therefore, you had what was known as, uh, you had what was called the East, which was defined as everything east of Yerushalayim, and as the Balamor Balamor puts it, to 90 degrees east of Yerushalayim, since, since the entire sphere, since the entire sphere is 360 degrees, and since 180 degrees of the sphere, was the Yishuv, was the habitation, and 180 degrees of the sphere was uninhabited, was an uninhabited sea known as the Tahom, the deep, and that the habitation was equally divided between east and west, with Yerushalayim dead center. Now, today, we call the center uh, it, has, it was decided uh, back uh, in the early 20th century that the longitude that passed through from the North Pole to the South Pole through Greenwich, England, was known as the Prime Meridian. And it was from there that everything east of the Prime Meridian was considered east, and everything west of the Prime Meridian is considered west, or less the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. The Eastern Hemisphere is east of the Prime Meridian, 180 degrees East from east from Greenwich to the Dateline, and um, and the Western Hemisphere was 180 degrees west of Greenwich, England, to the Dateline. That was the sign in the early 20th, early 20th century, and there was a great deal of discussion and argument as to whether uh, Greenwich, England, was the place to choose. But that's that's beyond the scope of this discussion. But according to the Rishonim, 
according to, as we're going to see, the Kuzar River, if you go to Labium for sure, according to the Balamor, the prime meridian was through Yerushalayim, which, by the way, is approximately 35 degrees uh, east of, of Greenwich. So if you actually, if you wanted to take a look at this map, uh, you have the, uh, the prime meridian, longitude zero, passing through Greenwich, England. And you go, and therefore, 90 degrees east of Greenwich passes through Russia and Western China. But if it is, if the prime meridian was Jerusalem, it was Yerushalayim, so actually, uh, it would be approximately 35 degrees east of a regular map's 90. So therefore, 90 plus 35 uh, is, is 125, which would place the uh, 90 degrees east of Yerushalayim to be approximately, just about, approximately the border, the eastern border of China. Yes, it does cut off. It cuts off Russia, and it cuts off parts of China, but, uh, it, but it, it straddles the eastern border of, of China. According to, so according to the Balamor, according to the Balamor, the center, the, the prime meridian, the longitude from which you uh, measure east and west, is, runs through Yerushalayim. And therefore, 90 degrees east of Yerushalayim is what's known as the east. And now here's the caveat, according to the Balamor. Remember, we said that it was the eastern hemisphere was considered the habitation. The western hemisphere was nothing. So what's considered the west? Are you going to tell me that the west is 90 degrees west of Yerushalayim, just like the east is considered 90 degrees east of Yerushalayim, ending with the eastern border of China, well, it would make sense that the logic would follow that the west, the west, would be 90 degrees west of Yerushalayim, okay, till the extent, the final extent of the west, wherever that might be. But that is not how that that is not how the Chazon Ish understands the Balamor because you can't call the Western Hemisphere nothing even though it's nothing but an ocean and even though nothing lives there you have to call it either East or you have to call it West and the Chazon Ish's understanding of the Balamor is that the definition, the east, is Yerushalayim, 90 degrees east, and now get this, and the west is from Yerushalayim, not 90 degrees, not 180 degrees, but 270 degrees, until it reaches the border of China from its, from its eastern side. So according to the Chazon Isha's understanding of the Balamor, the east of the world, Yerushalayim, is the prime meridian. No question about that. The east reaches 90 degrees, which is, now if you're taking a sphere of, uh, of, of 360 degrees, and, uh, and the earth rotates, once in 24 hours. So each, uh, each 90 degrees, which is one quarter of the globe, is approximately six hours. So six hours east of Yerushalayim is called the east. 18 hours west of Yerushalayim is called the west. So according to the Balamor, East of Yerushalayim, you are in the east. You keep going, you're in the east, you're in the east, you're in the east, you're in the east, until you hit the border of China, the easternmost border of China where it touches the Pacific. 
if you go any farther east than that, you are now in the West. You are in, you are in the most western edge of the West. So according to the Balamor, at least the way the Fason Ish understands the Balamor, Japan, which is off the coast of China, here's Japan, off the coast of China, according to the way the Chazon Ish understands the Balamor, this is already part of the West. So the West, according to the Balamor, here's Yerushalayim. From here to here is the East. From here, west, 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 end of west. Once you understand that, and by the way, that is the crucial difference between the Chazonish and Rav Tukachinsky. Because Rav to Kaczynski says, absolutely not. Just because they, they you know, if you take a, a, a 12th century model and they didn't think that anything lived on the, on the Western Hemisphere, don't think that because of that they called it all West. East is East and West is West. And the definition of East is 180 degrees East of the Prime Meridian, wherever you put the Prime Meridian. And west is 180 degrees west of the prime meridian, wherever you put the prime meridian. So according to Rav Tukachinsky, Japan is still part of the east because the east goes 180 degrees east of Yerushalayim. According to Rav Tukachinsky, this is the definition of east. And according to Rav Tukachinsky, this is the definition of west. According to Chazonish, the definition of East is this. And the definition of West is and that is the crucial difference. But once you understand that, once you understand that, then you could start to understand these two rules the way the Balamor explains these two rules.